question is Dr. Grzdanik, and he's going to speak on therapeutic outcomes of SARDS dogs with the presence of normal day vision and completely absent retinal electrical activity. Okay. So here we go again with the most controversial topic on the earth, SARDS, and probably one of the most controversial speakers as well. Okay, here we go. Okay, so basically, I mean, everybody is aware of what the SARDS is, sudden acquired retinal degeneration syndrome, and that classic definition, sudden onset of blindness, a history of PUPD, elevated liver enzymes, flat TRG, normal-looking retina. So uh, basically, that's been a uh, syndrome recognized for 30 years. And in this presentation, we're going to actually, um, I'm going to show something which basically is definitely SARS, but we believe it's kind of intermediate stage of disease. So not that advanced end stage of disease, basically, where you have completely blind patients. So pretty much in terms of the uh, intermediate SARS criteria that we used, uh, those are dogs which have normal day vision. So they can do object tracking. In some cases, those were actually dogs which had normal day and night vision. Uh, they have positive menace response. They have completely flat TRGs, and they have that classical uh, chromatic pupil light reflex deficits, so no red, good blue. And this is a video of the very first dog that we ever recognized in 2009. So you're going to see a small object going down on the floor. Oops, let's go back. So let's play that video. So here we go. So basically, object goes on the floor so dog can see this dog had a menace. Uh, no ERGs, no red, good blue. At that point, uh, we didn't know exactly what that thing is. We recommended a treatment. We're not very convincing. And basically, a dog was treated with steroids and in three months went completely blind. So. Okay, so since every, I, from time to time people kind of speculate that I see weird stuff in Iowa that, that nobody else sees anywhere else in the world. This is a patient from the Texas uh, that was referred to us by Dr. Warren. So on the bottom of the screen you can see the ERG tracings from that dog from the initial presentation in Texas. So those are flat ERGs completely extinguished. Uh, you can see the fundus image from that dog. So that's that kind of a typical uh, uh, SARDS retina, pale optic nerve head, some vascular attenuation, but really no retinal degeneration, a little bit of the shine that you see that's the overexposure from the fundus camera. Can we play the video on the top, please? <clears throat> And we have that classical clinical picture. So you can see this dog following the cotton ball in the bright light uh, without any problems. Then you're going to see cotton ball tracking in dim light. Dog is completely blind. And then classical responses. So no red response. And when you do the blue light, blue response. A lot of these dogs are pretty much incidental finding. They come for completely different reasons. They really do not come for uh, reasons of the vision issues. So, so in our patient population, I, uh, this is a little bit different compared to the abstract because we've seen quite a bit of dogs this year. Uh, so we have total 21 dogs so far. In terms of the patient population, uh, uh, neuter males are at 57%, spayed females 43%. Median age is nine years, so very typical uh, for the general SARS population. Uh, median history of possible visual issues when visual issues have been reported by owners is approximately three months. Uh, history of autoimmune diseases present is in 81% of the patients. In terms of PUPD and polyphagia, there are 24% of the patients. And when you combine PUPD, polyphagia, or elevation of liver enzymes, it's at 51%. So almost every second dog had some of these typical findings seen in SARDS. We looked also in our use of the ivermectin in terms of the heartworm prevention, and now almost 90% of these dogs were on heart guard. 
So if you look uh, in uh, breeds, I apologize, the table is kind of the densely organized. You're going to see usual suspects, some miniature schnauzers. We have two. We had two beagles, and we had two shih tzus. And then in terms of other breeds of dogs, predominantly small breeds of dogs, has been previously, report, previously reported for SARS patient population. And if you look in the last column in the laboratory abnormalities, you will see a lot of uh, changes in liver enzymes, some dogs with issues with a BUN, proteinuria, which again is something that we frequently see in SARS patient population. Okay, what about treatment? So uh, one of these dogs was not treated. Uh, dog went blind nine months after being initially diagnosed and unfortunately died 12 months after diagnosis. Had recurrent episodes of pancreatitis, uh, which in, unfortunately in my experience is uh, probably among the most frequent uh, issues are causing premature death in SARS patient population and was basically diagnosed with cholangic hepatitis, liver and kidney failure. In terms of the intermediate SARS or this uh, population, basically uh, when dogs were treated with monotherapy, so single immunosuppressive drug, uh, we have a cyclosporin uh, in two patients, monotherapy with prednisone in two patients, and then we had two dogs which were treated with a bitherapy, cyclosporin and leflunomide, just for uh, less than a month, and then owners stopped medications against our recommendation. All these dogs went blind, and in the last column you can see the vision duration in months. So basically the first dog was untreated dog that was nine months. All other dogs pretty much went blind within the three months after being initially diagnosed. In terms of the intermediate SARS patients, basically which were treated with the bi or uh, three therapy, uh, we had only one dog which went blind, and that dog pretty much went blind within a month after being started on treatment. And in the last column, you can see actually duration of the follow-up for these patients. You can notice that a lot of these dogs are still relatively fresh within a one year of the follow-up. But we definitely have some dogs which are close to a year, and then dogs at 16 months and 24, basically, uh, months of, uh, uh, after treatment. Okay, so uh, we pulled a, a Kaplan-Meier curve uh, just to basically show how this actually looks in terms of the statistical analysis and outcomes. So pretty much what you can see, dogs which are not treated, were treated with monotherapy or where the treatment was discontinued, will lose vision up to nine months. Dogs which are treated with bi or three therapy uh, will have significantly better outcome. And in terms of the hazard ratios, which was calculated, hazard ratio was 50, which means dogs which are not treated or treated with monotherapy will have 50 times higher uh, risk of getting blindness compared to dogs which are treated with the bi-therapy or three-therapy. Okay, so uh, this is one of the patients uh, that we have a longest follow-up. Can we have a, a first video, please? Yeah, that's the one. You have to click on the on the play thing on the video itself. Yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, patient that we've seen 24 months ago. So you can see it's tracking cotton ball in bright light, and it's cutting, tracking cotton ball in dim light. So this dog had a positive menace in the right eye in dim and blight conditions, and in the left eye had an intermittent menace. And as a surprise has completely flat ERGs. So this dog really didn't come because of the history of the uh, vision problems. It actually uh, came because of the, some issues with a polyuria, polydipsia, and uh, skin problems. And our dermatologist actually referred to us so we can take a look in the eyes. This dog was treated with a triamcinolone leflunomide cyclosporin. It was visual for 19 months and intermediately had issued developed allergic reaction to leflunomide, so that had to be switched to mycophenolate. So 19 months after initial diagnosis went completely blind, and that was in a season where the allergies flared up for this dog. Can we have a second video, please? So you can see the MACE test, dog is pretty much bumping in all objects. It's very, very slow, unsecure. At that time, we did an intraocular IVIG treatment in combination with intraocular steroids, so that was intravitreal injections. 
Can we have a video number three, please? And three months after IVIG treatment, basically dog recovered visual navigation skills in bright light and recovered menace in the right eye as well. The menace is not that strong. The vision is definitely not as it was before, but dog is still uh, visual and functional. Okay, so now possible explanation why we see that flat ERG in dogs which can still track cotton balls in dim and bright light. So this is multifocal ERG from a control dog. Basically, it's a sort of the map representation of small electrical signals all over the retinal field. And on the left side, you can see the multifocal ERG from one of the SARS dogs, which still had visual navigation skills. If you look at this multifocal ERG map, you can see small fields of uh, electrical activity. And this is most likely explanation why these dogs still have active vision. When you do full field uh, uh, regular ERG routines, basically you're getting cumulative potential. And because of the cumulative potential, you are averaging all fields. So it's not difficult to anticipate that averaged amplitude will be flat despite of presence of some regional activity. Okay, so in terms of therapeutic approach to the SARDs, uh, for you who have been at ACV in 2013, we presented what we believe is early stage of the SARDs. Uh, those are dogs which are characterized with that characteristic no red, good blue response and ERG abnormalities. So what you can see on the ERG tracing on A, that's a full field scotopic response. B is a flicker response from that dog, and you see the lack of the small flicker amplitudes with the light stimuli. And C is the same dog, basically three months after start of the therapy, you can see recovery of the flicker. So for this patient population, we know that in 97% of the patients, monotherapy will be effective. So basically, it will reverse possible night vision issue, it will reverse possible ERG deficits, and definitely will prevent further progression of disease. Today, we uh, have showed you some data from the, what we believe is intermediate stage of disease where we still have vision, uh, but we completely lose retinal electrical activity. And for these dogs, we, you have to amp the basically uh, therapeutic uh, approach. So you have to use bite or tree therapy because monotherapy will not work anymore, as it's been shown. And then we come to the holy grail, basically. Those are advanced SARS dogs or dogs that we typically see in a, in a clinic. Uh, in our experience, and hopefully we're going to show data next year or in 2018, basically you have to amp the therapy even more. So you have to go with quad therapy. So you have to do IVIG. You have to use basically uh, steroids. You have to use uh, uh, cyclosporin uh, leflunomide. Can we have this video, please? So this is a dog which was treated four years ago in October 2012. It was completely blind. Uh, was treated with intraocular IVIG and steroid trims, uh, leflunomide and uh, cyclosporin. And dog basically uh, recovered menace response, uh, which was lost a couple of years ago. You can see the dog is still very active, visual, obviously does not have a problems, but does not have a menace anymore and has a de uh, progressive retinal degenerative changes, which is indicative that disease is still progressing. So basically, when you're thinking about SARDs, uh, what we are kind of proposing is a, a kind of the SARDs inferno, or if you want, Dante's inferno. So further you wait, closer to the hell you're going to come. So you catch them early. Treat them early, you have better chance with monotherapy. If disease is progressing, you have to amp the therapy with more of the medications. If disease goes all the way down to the hell, basically it's going to be very, very difficult to reverse them. In terms of the summary and the guidelines, uh, routine screening for SARDs is highly recommended, especially in dogs with history of PUPD, polyphagia, elevated liver enzymes, and autoimmune diseases. Immunosuppressive therapy definitely works. You have to be aggressive, and you have to start it early. And uh, possibly proposed change in nomenclature. So we start recognizing and identifying early, intermediate, and advanced SARDs, and based on that, instituting therapy may help basically more effectively treating these dogs. 
For everybody who is still in doubt whether this is autoimmune disease or not, you can visit our poster tomorrow, and you're going to see a lot of falsity images from dogs within a, a two to four weeks after sudden onset of blindness. And as in this image, basically, you're going to see a lot of these dogs have retinal detachments. So in my mind, if something has retinal detachment and response to steroids or other immunosuppressive medications, it has to be autoimmune. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, thank you. Um, when do you choose to use mycophenolate? Uh, basically, in terms of the mycophenolate, uh, I, we use it exclusively in the situations when dogs do not tolerate leflunamide. So they have allergic reaction or they do not tolerate the cyclosporin itself. And I would say cyclosporin is probably much more frequent uh, culprit. For some particular reason, almost 30% of my SARS patient, uh, patients do not tolerate cyclosporin. So it's not the issue of the vomiting, but definitely the area. Uh, in terms of general use of PRED, I discourage it because a lot of these dogs have these typical pseudo cushing cushing symptoms. Once when you start with a PRED, it will definitely work for the eyes, but the side effects are not acceptable for majority of the owners, and liver enzymes go uh, sky high. Not to mention that a lot of these dogs have proteinuric because of early kidney disease, so PRED will definitely not help with that. Yes? Can you briefly comment on how, as recent as four years ago, you attributed SARDS to a cryptic neoplasia in approximately 35% of dogs, your own words, mm -hmm. and now you've switched from that to autoimmune disease? Well, basically, uh, we, we recognize that trying to describe something which is called Im immune media retinitis. So basically, if you look in our uh, 2008 review paper, there are actually dogs which have neoplasia. And we definitely see those patients. Uh, as we've seen more and more patients over the years and screened them, that basically percentages drop down. So I would say that in the immune media retinitis population, if you look in that criteria, and that's positive red response or presence of some ERG activity, basically you're going to have almost 10% of dogs which have a type of the cancer. So basically, if you have something that it's characterized as immune immediate retinitis based on our criteria, it's a good idea to screen for a cancer because definitely some of these dogs may have it. Thank you very much.